So here we are looking at the life of Peter today and seeing how Jesus changes him and restores him and uh, puts him back together again after that terrible incident when he denied Jesus three times uh, on the night before the crucifixion. Peter's life is a colourful one and as we look at his life we realise that he's been transformed from a simple fisherman into somebody who's beginning to understand a little bit more of who Jesus is. He sees Jesus giving people forgiveness, healing them, transforming them, teaching them. And then he, uh, he has this experience when Jesus calls him across the water and says, get out of the boat and come and walk across to me. And he does it until he realizes that he's actually walking on water and he didn't think he could, but Jesus has shown to him that anything's possible, really. And his faith was convinced. He, there was that moment when Jesus asked the disciples who people were saying he was, and Peter immediately blurts out and says, you're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Didn't really understand about the cross which was to come but he was convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. But then he started to take things and put his own life uh, in his own hands. And uh, there's that incident in the upper room uh, just before the Last Supper when Jesus washes the disciples' feet, but Peter refuses to take part in it. And he says, no, Lord, I want you to wash my hands and my feet. And sooner or later, he denies his Lord three times. His faith and his faithfulness are shattered in that denial time. And he ends up weeping bitterly as he realises what he's done. But Jesus wants Peter. He wants Peter as a crucial part of his team to take over the work now that Jesus will be ascending into heaven soon. So here in this resurrection story, we have this wonderful conversation that takes place. And we see Jesus restoring Peter completely. But first, let's read the story in the Gospels. John chapter 21, and Mike's going to read to us. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathanael from Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. That night, got nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. So he called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. So he said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to hold the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. But they weren't that far from the shore, maybe about 100 yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. But Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? But they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time. Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When he had finished eating, 
Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, you truly love me more than these. Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. When you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which peace would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following him. And this was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had, and had said, Lord, who's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. And because of this, the rumour spread amongst the brothers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. And we know that his testimony is true. But Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. You can just see these fishermen doing what they know best talking in brief bursts about some moment that they'd shared in the last few days. Lapsing into silence as they set the nets and then gathering them in and realising that they haven't caught nothing. They, they've fished all night and there's nothing in the nets. They're just a short distance away from the shore and there's a figure standing on the beach looking out and in the dim light they don't know who it is. Did you catch any fish? The man says. No, they said. And so the man on the shore says, well, go on, try again. Put your net out on the other side. You'll find some there. There's an electrical charged moment. There's something very familiar about this guy, this voice, his confidence. And when they follow the instructions of this man on the shore and they pull up 153 fish in one load, it's Simon that recognises Jesus and he climbs out of the boat and he thrashes his way to Jesus as quickly as he can. The other disciples show a little bit more decorum and they pull the boat up on the shore and there's Jesus with a fire cooking some fish and with bread enough for everyone to have breakfast. It's a wonderful breakfast. I'd have loved to have been there. The fire, the bread, the fish cooking on it. Jesus calling them to bring some of their fish as well. And after they ate it, they fill. And they talked and talked together. Jesus turns to Peter. Now Peter loved Jesus and wanted to be with him more than anything else in the world. So when Jesus and Pete, when Jesus asked Peter three times, "Do you love me, Peter?" Peter feels a little bit put out. "Do you love me more than these?" says Jesus. When Jesus asks that question, he's using a word, agape. 
a word which describes selfless love. He makes a not so subtle reference to the way Simon had in the past proclaimed his devotion to Jesus. A devotion to Jesus higher than all the rest of the disciples. But it had all gone wrong in that denial. What did Peter say today? Yes, I care deeply for you, he says. He uses the word filio. Peter's learned humility, but he can't use the word agape. He can't use that word to describe selfless love just yet. And he's certainly not going to now say that he's more spiritual than the others because he's got that memory of the denial going on. He can't be proud any longer. And even though in the past he's compared himself to the other disciples in the way in which he's declared his undying devotion to Christ, now he has to just simply say, Lord, I love you. Jesus asks him a second time, do you love me? And the second time Jesus asks that question, Peter doesn't reply straight away. Do you love me more than these, says Jesus? Do you really agapass me? Peter takes a huge sigh. Lord, you know I love you. And he uses that word felio again. Once again, Peter makes no boast, just a simple declaration of love. He refuses to go to that highest love because he can't go there. This is not the same man who watched Jesus heal a man let down through the roof of his house. This man has been transformed. He's a different Peter. But Jesus asks him a third time, do you love me? And this time, Jesus uses the love word felio. The word that Peter's been using so far. Do you really love me? Peter's answer is a little longer this time. He says the fact that Jesus knows all things, including his heart. And he therefore knows that Peter loves him. And in these moments... Peter is called to be a servant. That first question pointed to Peter being a hireling whom Christ speaks of in Scripture. Someone who would run away when danger came because he had no love for the sheep he'd been hired to look after. He runs away because they're not his sheep. Feed the lambs, says Jesus. You ought to give the little ones what they need milk and the tender care that goes with it so they can grow and with the second question Peter is told to shepherd the sheep protect them from predators keep them from harm nudge them in the right direction when they wander off hunt for them when they are lost put ointment on their sores bind their wounds lead them to still waters pick them up when they're tired and with the third question, he's to feed the sheep. Lambs need milk, sheep need good pasture. And the shepherd will lead them carefully from one hillside to another valley as they travel through a wilderness filled with danger. This is a heart-searching conversation. The sheep are not Peter's. They belong to Jesus, but unless Peter loves Jesus, he will never love these sheep enough to lead them. Isn't it amazing what Jesus asked Peter, really? Given that Peter has let Jesus down like he has recently, why didn't Jesus ask him if he was sorry for having denied him? Why didn't he demand what Simon planned on doing to restore the broken relationship? It was Peter who had broken it. Surely he should fix it. 
but there's no sense of chastisement in Jesus' voice. No rebuke, no correction, no trying to fix the problem. All there is is love and the desire to restore the one who has fallen. Now Jesus had taught the disciples previously that they were to forgive. And now in front of those other disciples, Jesus reinforces that message by not prosecuting Simon for his public denials. Jesus reinstates Peter as one of his disciples. He restores him as the rock in the group. Oh yeah, Peter has failed, but that failure was not to be the end. That failure was not to mean he would never again be a friend of Christ. That failure was not the end to his service for the Lord, nor of his leadership in the church to come. Because failure is not final with Christ. Failure is not the end of a relationship. Even denying Jesus before men is not the end of your relationship with Jesus. When someone fails, we have a responsibility to find ways to gently restore them. That's the message Jesus is trying to get across here. And Jesus gives us his most important work, feeding and caring for his sheep, as he commissions Peter to start again. As Jesus has asked Peter three times, he wipes away the shame, the guilt and the sorrow of Peter's heart. Christ did not gloss over or ignore what Peter had done. He removed the guilt of it. He removed the shame of it from Peter's heart. And he does it before the minds of the other disciples. He's bringing Peter back to where it all began. To the lake of Galilee. To a miraculous catch of fish and to a call to follow him. Just as, Peter want, just as Jesus wanted Peter to understand and to know that his service for Christ would not be based on the strength or the depth of his faith, but on the brokenness of his heart, Jesus restores him with love. It was from that brokenness of denial that Peter is restored. And it was out of his declaration of love for Christ that he is commissioned to leadership and servanthood. Here is where the ordinary fisherman, previously named Simon, became the extraordinary servant named Peter. And this morning I want us to just understand that we desperately need to hear what Jesus is saying to us. Yes, we failed. Yes, we've let him down. But Jesus takes us back to that familiar place. That place where it all began for us when we first accepted Christ as Saviour. Our nets may be empty. We may be tired from all the toil and the labour which seems to be in vain. But he takes us back to where it all began. And he asks us, do you love me? Christ this morning wants to heal our old wounds. The ones which bring us deep shame and guilt. The ones which prevent us from walking closely with him. Like Simon Peter, we're hurt. We're grieved that he would ask again whether we love him or not. But Jesus grieves our spirits this morning in order that he might heal them. He doesn't want to know the strength of our faith or the depth of our Bible knowledge. He doesn't want to know what gifts we would bring to him. He doesn't want to know what service we would offer. He wants to know whether we love him or not. Do you love me? That's enough. That is sufficient. Now feed the lambs. Tend the sheep, feed the sheep. Mm -hmm.